have three little sisters. Mm-hmm. I wanted to write something. I, I wanted to write something. I was ready to write something uh, about something I knew. My parents are both alive. I mean, it's a fictional story, but uh, you know, they're very much. Yeah, I wanted to write something about some relationship that I knew, and I thought I understood uh, sister brother dynamic. And I wanted. I was in LA at the time, and I and my only rule was uh, have as much fun in every scene as I could, and not judge any of it, and just keep going forward until I was finished. Um, and that's that's where it started. The other stuff kind of got tack, tacked on as I went back and looked at it and tried to find a, a, a sharper focus for it, and you know, B story and topical aspect under on the underlying story and through. I think you hit on it. I think that there's a good aspect of we talked about it. It's it's not. We've all seen the the movies about people grieving and you know someone passes away and people got to grieve and then go through the memory box and all that stuff. We have very little of all of that. I mean, there are some pictures, you know, the old the old pictures of the past in there, but it's very very sparse. It's about um, a bunch of people trying to find the spot where they can start grieving. It's about the kind of the immediate a- a aftermath versus a, a long time, you know, and, and just kind of that. Uh, I think there is something to that where, where you, you look, people have so many different reactions in, in those times. And, and my always thing is, why isn't this person crying? Why aren't they a complete wreck? Well, sometimes it takes a while before you give yourself permission because it might be too overwhelming. Um, and then in that event, you have what, like the three primary characters, the, the brother that I play and the two sisters. He comes from uh, this the former movement that has uh, since passed, and he's plopped down into his old his old uh, hometown in this world that he looks very out of place in and is very out of place in. And similarly, they just lost their parents, so the whole world is completely different for them. Right. And they've been plopped down in something that they have to now wrestle with. I don't think I'm a micromanager. Uh on set, I my hope is to hire good people and let them do their job. Mm-hmm. My hope when I'm working with actors is, and it was the case on this film, first of all, just having good actors who were dropped in and understood their roles that made right. my job a lot easier. And so what we were, given that what we were able to really focus on is the moment to moment. And in the moment to moment for each character is where you really tell their story and ultimately tell their arc. And when you miss those moment to moments, that's where things get to feel off. And so our work on set was really just to refine those things. And a lot of it, you know, 80, 90% of the time they had it, you know, they, they knew what the moment to moment was. And then, you know, we just refine a little bit and that moment to moment and that refinement has to come through the filter of each character. How does Bo deal with this in this moment? How does Arden deal with it in this moment? How does Claire deal with it in this moment? And because the script was strong and the characters were well, well written and round on the page, it makes that a lot easier because their given circumstances are strong. I think that something a- along those lines that was always interesting to me for Bo's story is that he's been in New York for these seven years. You know, he's in the thrust of the Occupy Wall Street movement and he's sort of stayed. But I think when you're in that kind of a situation, Knowing that there's a stability behind you, that a family is there, whether it's support, whether it's financially, whatever it is, makes that doable in a sense. Even though he's sort of exiled himself in his shame of his first failure in his life. So I think when that gets ripped out, when his uncle finds him and tells him, and we kind of sit on Bo and watch him react and non-reacting, I think that he really has... uh, a lot to deal with with that loss because of the blame of it of being away and it's you know it's how do you say what's harder for one person to grieve than the other but it's it's definitely different uh from him from the kids as you know from the girls since they were there um and the those differences are something that really attracted me to the script because i think they're unique and specific to each of them yeah it's Catherine elvio's first film she plays art she plays Arden and we just uh, we've got a screening going right now and we were just watched the first 10 minutes and she's got that first scene when he comes back to the house and sits down and he says I'm Bo and she says I'm Arden your sister 
says hi to Claire. She gets up and leaves, and 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 Arden says she's your sister too, and she kind of gets up and leaves. And it's the first time we meet her, and I and that scene always moves me. When we cut that scene, you know, in the editing room, I was like, man, she's gonna be really good in this, and she just had it. You know, she's from New Orleans. Her family's in New Orleans. Um, she she's self-submitted. Got, she self-submitted for it. She was. Uh, and one we of the watched the tape separately. I mm-hmm. like saying this we were we were in New York. We try. We didn't want to judge each other's picks and be together watching the the audition tapes. I mean, ultimately, you know, I had a lot of say, and that was great. But ultimately, there's a fifty-one percent right there and forty-nine right here on, on that because he is the director and things like that. Um, uh, but we both circled her and put like a little star and put our little notes and 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 I think a large part of it was. I hope she keeps coming and bringing it, and she did. And like they drove in from New Orleans for the callback. And her dad actually told me a funny story last night where he said, when we came in, there were a couple of more girls that we were seeing before her, and we said, hey, why don't since you guys came in, we also wanted her to be as good as we made in our minds and what we saw and the potential. And so we asked her if they would be okay, we could work with her a little longer, or go to the end of the day. And he told me. Um, you came out, and we're actors, we love actors. If you come in to audition for us, I mean, we want it to be as warm of a situation as possible. We are your biggest fans. And so he heard us talking to some of the other girls who were great, they're just different, great. Um, and he, we were talking to them and their parents and just encouraging them and things like that. And he said, "I, you guys didn't say anything to me when Cappy came out. She was in there for a long time, you said nothing to me. And Cappy's mom called him as they're driving home. She's like, well, what did they say? And he said, nothing. <laughs> Nothing, and I, I'm sure they had to deal with that right. <laughs> for months, for eight eight hours, oh, eight hour drive trying to figure out. And she had strep, and I mean, she came in and she was as good as we. She was the exact same thing. And then on set, the diner, there's the diner scene. It was the very first thing that that we shot with her. And then it's kind of the moment of truth. And you say, what? How's this kid gonna react with a big old camera in her face and a bunch of guys standing behind it and all these extras and this restaurant and all of these things and people put a slate in her face. And she, I mean, from the get-go, she has it, whatever it is, she has yeah. it. And then Jeff whispered, this is my version of whispers in my ear, it's like, you better bring your A game. Huh? <laughs> I don't need you to whisper that in my ear, I know, I'm sitting here, I know what I'm looking at. <laughs>